Hello everyone, I'm Heather. We are leaving very soon for our cruise on Royal Caribbean's brand new ship, Utopia of the Seas. And we have one little problem. My oldest son, Andrew, sent his passport in for renewal and he has not gotten it back yet. So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about what you can do or what you need to know if you find yourself in this situation. Okay, so first of all, more information on why Andrew doesn't have a passport right now. Andrew's had a passport for a long, long time, ever since he was a little kid. We have a whole huge number of old passports. And the last time he used his passport was last year in May of 2023, when we went on our cruise on Holland America's Eurodam to Alaska. When we went on that cruise, I happened to notice that Andrew's passport was going to expire in February, so February of 2024. And I just kind of noted that, that he was gonna to need to get it renewed. I reminded him a couple of times earlier in this year that it would really be a good idea for him to get his passport renewed. But for him, it just wasn't a priority because of his circumstances in the first half of 2024. Andrew has spent the last three years in law school and spring semester of 2024 was his final semester of law school during which he had an unpaid internship with emphasis on unpaid. <laughs> Prior to that, he had been working for pay at a law firm. He had a job while he was going to law school, so he had money from that. But he had to give up that job so he could do this internship at a different place, and it was unpaid. So money has been very tight for him in 2024 because of that. So getting his passport renewed just wasn't a priority because he didn't anticipate that he was going to be able to afford to go anywhere anyway. But this opportunity came up for us to go on this cruise on Utopia of the Seas, which my younger two kids and I were planning on going anyway. We decided that we wanted him to get to come too, kind of a celebration for finishing law school and all of that. But that left him in the position now of having an expired passport. I reminded him again a couple times, I really need you to get your passport renewed. He still hadn't done it, so I finally sent him the money so he could get his passport renewed. I sent him enough for the regular passport fee, which is $130 for renewal, expedited processing, which is another $60, bringing it to $190, and rush shipping back to him. That's something that you need to know. When you send in your passport, it can take up to two weeks for your, pa for your new passport to come back to you. You actually get two things back from the passport processing center when you renew a passport. You get your new passport sent in one envelope and you get your old passport sent in a separate envelope. We have a whole box full of old passports because we've all had so many. They will do something to the old passport, punch a hole through it or cut off a corner or something like that so it's not usable but you do get it back as kind of a souvenir. <laughs> if you, I mean, a lot of people, if they have a lot of stamps in the back of their passport, they will want to have that, you know, for, for their memories. So I intended for Andrew to pay both of those, expedited processing and rush return shipping. Now he sent his passport in for renewal with all the stuff you need. You have to send in your old passport, the form that you have to fill out, passport photo, and the money that you need. When you renew your passport through the mail or if you're applying for the very first time, you can only pay with a check or a money order. You can't use any kind of card payment. There is going to be card payments available for renewals going forward once they really get online renewals going, but they've had some hiccups with that. That's not necessarily available all the time to everyone yet. Now, the last time I got my passport renewed, I didn't even add expedited processing or rush return shipping. And I got it back in like two weeks from when I sent it in. By mid-July, Andrew still hadn't gotten his passport back. And so I was getting kind of concerned because I'm like, even if you hadn't paid for expedited, it shouldn't be taking this long. I was nervous about us getting it in time for our cruise. I really wanted him to have the passport back in time for our check-in date. You can check into your cruise 45 days prior is what it was for this cruise. It's just so much easier when you go on a cruise to have a passport. They highly recommend if you read your cruise contract and your cruise documents that everybody has a passport. Even though you are technically allowed on a closed loop cruise that departs from and returns to the same U.S. city, you're allowed to travel with a 
different government issued photo ID, like a driver's license or a state ID and your birth certificate, but it's not recommended. And I personally don't recommend it. The cruise lines really prefer that you have a passport. It is international travel due to the passenger vessel services act cruise ships are all required to make at least one port stop in a different country than the United States once they leave the United States. So you always are going to be going to a different country when you go on a cruise out of the United States. And honestly, in most other places too. So it is considered international travel and it's really best like as in any other form of international travel that you have a passport. You can't travel internationally any other way like flying without a passport or at least a passport card. And that would only apply to certain trips to Mexico and Canada. I asked Andrew to check the status of his passport application online. You can do that on the State Department's website. And he said it showed that they had received his renewal and it was in processing. And they had started processing it on July 1st. So right away that even shows you how long it took in the mail to get to the passport processing center to the point that they started processing it. It was at least like a week and a half, two weeks, just for the mail. And he did take it directly to the post office and checked with the postal worker to make sure that he was like doing everything right. They will know that and they can be a good resource for you if you need help with it, mailing it in. So they ha didn't even start processing it until July 1st. And Andrew noticed something in the status. It was marked as standard processing, not expedited. Even though he had written out the check for $190 for expedited. You're noticing he did not write out the check for faster return shipping and I'll come back to that. So we're a little frustrated with that because regular processing can take six to eight weeks, which makes it really iffy if we're gonna get his passport back in time especially since he chose not to pay for the rush shipping, even though I had sent him the money to pay for it. Apparently this does happen sometimes where even though you indicate that you want expedited processing and you pay for the expedited processing, sometimes for whatever reason at the passport processing center, they don't process it expedited. And the reason I know this is because there's a little thing right on the State Department's page, the passport page, that says, if you paid for expedited processing and didn't get it, do this to get a refund of your fees for the expedited processing. <laughs> so apparently it happens enough that they have a process in place to refund the fee for expedited processing to the people who didn't actually get their processing expedited. So that's kind of frustrating. Andrew's not actually even sure. He knows he wrote the checkout for $190. But he doesn't know, did he mess up on the form? Did he actually check standard processing instead of expedited? He's not sure. He had, there's no way he can tell that now. And like he said, it is what it is. We can't do anything about it at this point. There is a number that you can call, and it, they say you should call it if you get within two weeks of your trip and you still don't have your passport back. I don't know what exactly that accomplishes. Does anybody know? Have you ever been in that situation? Andrew's actually had an experience in the past. He and three of his friends were traveling to Mexico and one or two of them did not get their passport in time for their trip. And they took the next step, which was to contact the office of their congressman. And then their congressman somehow was able to push things along and got them their passports in time because they were taking a flight to Mexico. I don't know exactly how that works. If anybody's done that, leave that in the comments below. I haven't actually personally had this problem because I always send in mine, Megan's, and Ben's passports for renewal way ahead of schedule. It can be kind of tricky if you travel a lot. If you travel very frequently, you might not have any time to go through the regular process of sending in your old passport and getting your new passport back in time for your trip. In that case, you do have a couple of options. One option is you can get a duplicate passport. If you travel so frequently that you don't have time to get a new passport in between trips, it is possible to get a duplicate passport so that you can have two that you can use. Another option is you can, if you have an urgent or emergency reason for traveling and you need your, pass your new passport right away or 
your first passport, if that's the case, right away, is you can make an appointment or U.S. passport office where they can get you your passport immediately. But you have to have like some kind of documentation, you know, to show I'm, I'm on a flight tomorrow to go help my daughter who was in a horrible car accident in another country or something like that, you know, so, or, you know, you need urgent medical treatment and you need to get back to the United States. Then you can go to the, like the U S consulate in the country that you're visiting. For example, like say your passport got lost, or in this case, say we were traveling without Andrew having his passport because it doesn't come in time and something happened to him while we were in the Bahamas and he couldn't go back on the ship and he had to be flown home then that would be where you would need to go to the American consulate in the Bahamas for help because you cannot fly internationally without a passport. We still have just a little bit of time and we're hoping that Andrew's passport will come. But I'm frustrated because he decided to not send in the additional money and check the box for the rush return shipping. So in addition to either something happening where the expedited Processing didn't happen. He also did not opt for the rush return shipping. So it can take up to two weeks for your new passport to come back to you if you don't do that. <laughs> I'm cautiously hopeful that it'll come in time, but I'm also nervous that it won't. This did happen one other time though for Ben. You may remember if you've been watching my channel for a while, Ben and I booked kind of a last minute cruise, a Halloween on the high seas cruise on Disney Wonder out of San Diego in the fall of 2022. The reason we had done that is because I was trying to make sure that the kids were kind of even on their Disney cruises. Before we took our cruise on Disney Magic, which neither Megan or Ben had ever been on over spring break of 2023, okay? We had all been on The Wonder before, but it was in 2017, and Ben was pretty young, and he didn't remember it at all. I said, oh wait, I can take him on another cruise on The Wonder while Megan was away at college. Let's do that. He did have time left on his passport, but this brings up a very important point that a lot of people don't know and causes them to be denied boarding from their cruise or denied boarding to their flight to another country sometimes. This is something very important that you need to know. Most countries require that your passport has a certain number of time left on it before it expires to be admitted to that country. Some countries it's three months, some countries it's six months. I just always say you need to have at least six months left before your passport expires when you're traveling, just to be on the safe side. So. When we know when we get a new passport, when does this expire? What is six months before that? And then we make sure we send in our passport for renewal six months, be at least six months before it expires. And we kind of time it around our trip so that like, we'll usually do it right after we get back from a trip so that we have as much time as possible before we need to use them again to have them process the new passport and get it back to us. That is what we did in that situation with Ben in 2022. We had just spent almost all of August 2022 traveling in Europe, and we had gotten back at the end of August 2022, and Megan was leaving for college, you know, like in a week, and it was still the situation where they had to both present themselves in person. Ben, it was because of his age. And Megan, I think it was because it was the first time she was applying for an adult passport where they're good for 10 years. In both of those situations, they had to present themselves at, an, at a passport processing office in person. So we had like just a week between when we got back from Europe and when Megan was leaving for college, I took them both to the, it's the county clerk's office at the courthouse is where we were able to do it. And um, you had to present in person and give all your paperwork and all that. Now, they had both had passports before, so technically it was kind of the same as a renewal process, but they still had to be there. So we got that done right at the end of August of 2022. But then Ben and I booked this cruise in the meantime while the passports were off getting processed. I think it was late October of 2022. Yeah, because we were on the cruise on Halloween, I remember that. And we were like, oh shoot, your passport isn't back. I don't know what we would have used for a photo ID. I think in that instance, because he was a minor child, you're not required to have, I can't remember. 
I looked it up and I checked with Disney to make sure. I think it was fine because he was traveling with a parent and I was going to have my passport. I only needed to bring his birth certificate because at that time he was too young to have a driver's license. So if they were under the age where they couldn't, you know, you know, he didn't have anything that he could use as a government issued photo ID. I didn't even have his old passport. I'd sent it in to get his new passport. When I did the check-in for that cruise on Disney Cruise Line for Disney Wonder, I actually used Ben's birth certificate to check him in online in advance. And then two days before we left for the cruise, his new passport came in the mail. So even though I checked him in online with his birth certificate, when we showed up for the cruise a couple days later, we presented his passport and it was fine. They didn't even question it, they didn't care. They are always happier to have a passport to look at than they are to have the birth certificate ID thing. So they didn't care that I had checked him in with his birth certificate and then showed up with the passport. They didn't mind at all. It didn't make any difference. We whisked right through check-in to get on that cruise we both had our passports and it was great. So I'm really hopeful that that same thing will happen and Andrew's passport will still come in time. We have an extra wrinkle in that we're going down six days early to go to Disney World first before our cruise. So he won't be at home to get his mail in those six days. So if it comes then, that would re really be a bummer. So we're really hoping it comes before we fly down to Florida. What happens if you are in this situation and you're about to go on a cruise or any international trip for that matter, and you don't have your passport back? You got your first passport, you applied for it, and it hasn't come back yet, or you were renewing your passport and it hasn't come back yet and you need to leave. If you're going on an international trip, you can try calling that number that I mentioned before that's on the State Department's website to see if they can kind of speed things along. And they recommend you do that two weeks before your trip if you haven't gotten your passport back. I am not sure how willing they are to rush processing on a passport if it's not an emergency. But like I said earlier, Andrew's friends were able to call their congressman and he did push things along somehow and they did get their passports in time. But again, you don't want to be doing this on the la at the very last minute. You don't want to be trying to do that like the day before you're supposed to leave because they still have to mail you the thing. They can mail it faster but they still do have to mail it to you. Going to a passport office and doing the rush thing there, that's if you don't have the passport at all and you haven't already sent it in. You've never had a passport or you have one, but it's expired. That's when that situation would apply. But if you've already sent your old passport in or you've sent in your first application for an initial passport, once they've gotten that, you can't interrupt that process. So you can't have that going on and then try to go get a different new passport from a pa you know from an embassy or something because that's going to mess them up so they can try to rush the process that they are doing already at the passport processing center for the things you already sent in but they can't you can't do both so you want to be thinking about this well ahead of time if you're flying to a different country and your passport does not come in time, even if you tried some of these things to speed the process along, there's no way around it. You can't go. You cannot go. <laughs> they are not going to let you on an airplane to another country without a passport. They just aren't. So you can't go on your trip if you don't have your passport back before you have to get on your flight. That sucks when that happens, and that really emphasizes the reason why it's so important to make sure you renew or apply for your passport as early as possible. With a cruise, however, as long as it is out of the United States and a closed loop cruise, I don't know what the procedures are in other countries. Maybe someone from another country can give us some insight into that in the comments. But if it's a closed loop cruise, so you know, in our case, it's leaving out of Port Canaveral, we're returning to Port Canaveral. That is a closed loop cruise. Andrew can travel with his driver's license, which he did just get renewed in the last year, so that's fine. And his birth certificate. Okay, let's talk about the birth certificate. I don't actually know where his birth certificate is at this moment. There's a couple places it could be. I might have one in his baby book, which is sitting over there on the shelf, okay? I might have one in there. I know I got multiple copies. I gave one to his dad and stuff like that. So I might have one in my fire safe, which I have at home. 
Otherwise, if I don't have it in either of those two places, it's in my safe deposit box at the bank, which I need to plan ahead a little bit because I've obviously got to go to the bank when it's open, the main branch of the bank, and, you know, go downstairs and get them to let me in the vault and take my safe deposit box key and all that and get the thing out of the safe deposit box. So I've got to plan ahead for that. So you might have one problem is that, oh shoot, my passport didn't come back in time. Don't wait till the day before your cruise and go, oh, it's fine, I'll just use my birth certificate. If you don't know where your birth certificate is, okay, or you don't have one at all, what if your parents never gave it to you? I don't think I ever gave one to Andrew. He doesn't have it. So if, if we get to that point and he needs his birth certificate to go on this cruise, I have to bring it. He's in a completely different state. We're not even taking the same flight down there. So he'd have to have his driver's license, which I'm sure he keeps in his wallet all the time. But I have to make sure that I bring his birth certificate if he doesn't have his passport back in time. So if it's a situation like that, you've got to make sure you've got that birth certificate. If you don't personally have it and you need to get it, that's a whole nother issue. You need to do that well ahead of time. Maybe you've got to get it from your parents. Maybe you have to get it from the courthouse in the county of your birth. This cannot be a photocopy of your birth certificate. They will not accept that. It has to be a certified copy of your birth certificate, which means it has to have the raised seal. You can't take a photocopy of your birth certificate. That will not work. You have to have a certified copy of your birth certificate with the raised seal that was directly issued by the county office of records, basically, you know, that keeps track of birth and deaths, whatever that's called in the county where you were born. You've got to get it from them. If your parents don't have an extra copy or whatever, they can send you. So that's a process that can take some time. For some people, depending on what your whole family dynamic is like, you may not even know where you were born. You may not know the county that you were born in. Getting the birth certificate could actually prove to be more difficult than getting a passport. So if you have obstacles like that in your way of getting a certified copy of your birth certificate, you want to be thinking about that way ahead. And then the last thing I'm going to say is, if you have a certified copy of your birth certificate, and if you have a government issued photo ID, and as long as you are permitted to travel, like for example, you can't get a passport if you're a convicted felon in the United States and things like that. Or um, sometimes like in the case of my ex-husband, for example, you cannot get a passport if you owe back child support and things like that. The, um, there's a couple situations, you know, certain debts and things, they will not allow you to get a passport. But unless you're restricted by one of those conditions, I don't see a reason why everybody doesn't just get a passport. If you have the documents, get the passport and then you'll have it. Something really important that you need to know about passports is a passport proves both your identity, like it saying you are who it says you are, and it proves your citizenship. So it proves that you are this person and that you are a citizen of the United States. That's what a passport is doing. That's why it's so valuable. The reason that cruises ask you for the other two things, if you don't have a passport, a driver's license or some other state ID with a photo on it, and your birth certificate, the photo ID is proving your identity. The birth certificate is proving your citizenship. So this could actually be kind of complicated if you weren't born here. I'm sure there are situations where you became a citizen in the United States later. People do that all the time. In that case, their birth certificate would not help them. They would need their naturalization papers to prove that they're a citizen of the United States. One last thing I want to throw in here. If you are not a citizen of the United States, well, then you have to have a passport from the country that you are a citizen of. You know, British people come to Florida all the time, take cruises out of the United States. It's no problem. You, as a U.S. citizen with a passport, can go to another country and take a cruise out of, you know, Southampton or Barcelona or whatever. People do that all the time. That's totally fine. But in that situation, you know you have your passport because you needed it to get on the flight to go to that other country because you cannot get on a flight to another country without a passport. 
I hope this answers your questions and tells you a little bit more information that you might need to know about if you don't have your passport in time for your cruise. If you found value in this video, please give me a thumbs up down below. It tells YouTube that they need to show this video to more people and it really helps out my channel. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Have a great day everyone and safe travels.